Hello everyone, this is Dr. Andrew Chrysler teaching EE4418 at Idaho State University. In this video, we're going to be covering chapter 4.7 on the demodulation of FM signals. You can follow along in the textbook, Modern Digital and Analog Communication Systems, 5th edition, in pages 233 to 235. So let's first consider the theoretical way to demodulate an FM signal. So the FM information is contained inside the instantaneous frequency, since frequency modulation directly modulates the instantaneous frequency. So that's going to give us some angle that contains an integral of the message. And when we find the signal of the frequency modulation, we're going to have a constant amplitude multiplied by a cosine that contains a carrier frequency multiplied by time plus some constant multiplied by an integral of the message. So how can we recover the original message at the receiver? So the message is being integrated inside of the cosine. So let's think of a way to get that message from the inside of the cosine to outside of the cosine. Because that's what we need to do if we want to recover the message by itself at the receiver. So let's try differentiation, since we know that differentiation is going to take the, something from the inside and put it in front of the cosine. So if we take the differentiation of the frequency modulated signal in time, we're going to need to use the chain rule. So let's identify what the functions f and g are going to be. So g is going to be the argument of the cosine, and the derivative of g is going to be the time domain derivative of g, which is going to be the carrier frequency plus kf times the message. So when we take the derivative of that integral, we'll just end up with the message. So that's nice. And then f, the function f, is going to be a times that cosine wave. If we take the derivative of that, we're going to get minus a times sine of gt, where gt was that uh, the argument of the cosine. Now, if we apply one more thing and we apply this identity, we can get everything to be positive inside of that derivative of, that, of, the, of f. So taking the chain rule and then putting it all together, we have each one of these things. And combining them, we're going to get this long expression for the derivative of the frequency modulated signal. And we can see that in front of the sine wave, we do have a term that contains the message by itself. Now we have the derivative of the frequency modulated signal, and we have the original message, mt, in the coefficient. So this is good. We're definitely on the right track to being able to demodulate the, the, the original message so that we can recover the original message. OK, so if we think back to our talks on amplitude modulation, we can see that this has a similar form to the amplitude modulated signal where we have some constant plus a message being multiplied by a cosine or sine wave. So how did we demodulate the amplitude modulated signal? Well, if you remember, we used envelope detection, where we moved up the original message, and then we passed the um, multiplied the message by the cosine wave, and then we put that message through some kind of rectifier or some other function so that we could get that uh, envelope at the very end. And when we got the envelope, then we could do some other things to recover the message. So we should be able to do that now with our frequency modulated signal. All right, so for amplitude modulation, we had two requirements that had to be met in order to make sure that that envelope detection method actually worked. And so if you remember, we had to have that constant A and then when we added it to the message, we had to have that whole thing be greater than zero for all of the values of time. And we also needed the carrier frequency to be a lot higher than the bandwidth for the message. So what about for frequency modulation? What kind of requirements should we have for the derivative of the frequency modulated signal if we want to be able to apply envelope detection? So if we look at this derivative of the frequency modulated signal, we can see that we're going to need to make sure that this term is always going to have a positive value. So similar to the amplitude modulated signal, we needed that term to have a positive value. We're going to need to have a, the same term in the frequency modulated signal have a positive value. 
So how can we assure that the carrier frequency plus k f, the constant, multiplied by message is always positive? Well, <clears throat> that term is always going to be positive as long as the carrier frequency is larger than the constant times the maximum value of the message or the negative of the minimum value of the message. So if our message has a high of MP and a low of minus MP, we can make sure that the, the derivative of the frequency modulated signal is always larger than zero as long as the carrier frequency is greater than the constant KF multiplied by MP. So if we call the deviation from top to bottom, uh, delta omega, as long as the carrier frequency is larger than that deviation, we can make sure that we can recover this message using an envelope detector. All right, and then there's one more requirement that we should consider. We should make sure that the coefficient a is always constant and is not a time-dependent signal. So is this really possible? Well, let's consider a man walking through a central business district using his cell phone and trying to connect to a cell tower. So when he starts out walking, he's going to have some direct line of sight, let's say, to a cell phone tower, and that's going to give some constant A1. Now let's say the man walks for a few seconds through the business district where there's lots of different towers and um, buildings and things that are going to um, cause the message possibly to fade or to uh, change, and he's in a different spot now. Well, once he moves into this different spot, that's going to be a slightly different value of A. That means that A is actually probably going to change in time pretty often in under realistic conditions. So if you are going to apply envelope demodulation, one of the things that you will need to do is make sure that you compensate for this changing value of A uh, before you apply the envelope uh, detector method to the final frequency modulated signal derivative. Okay, so if we are able though to keep A constant and we are also able to keep the term of the carrier frequency plus KF times MT larger than zero, then we're going to have some signal that's in the black line and that's the the derivative of the frequency modulated signal. And then on top, we can see that that's the envelope. And that envelope is going to have the direct term of our message inside of it. So if we pass the derivative of the frequency modulated signal through an envelope detector, we can see that we'll be very close to being able to get the original message. It will just be a matter of, of slightly changing the amplitudes or removing some things at the very end. So that's how you can apply the theoretical demodulation to get the original message of a frequency modulated signal.